open up the second part by picking up where we left off last time, which was discussing the possible origins of the battlecruisers HMS Repulse and Renown, along with the large light cruisers Courageous, Glorious, and Furious. The Baltic project was an old idea of Admiral Fisher's, which basically consisted of landing a Russian army on the Baltic coast of Pomerania, 90 miles from Berlin, which would directly threaten the capital and necessitate the Germans to redistribute troops, relieving pressure on the Russian front, but ultimately leading to panic and collapse. During the years of 1914 and 1915, it would be one of several plans discussed by the Admiralty for using the Navy to break the deadlock of the armies on the continent. Other plans would include landing troops on the Belgian coast and an assault on the Dardanelles, the preferred project of Churchill which would eventually be chosen to execute. Now, there would be other plans including seizing the islands near the German coast to either observe the movements of the German fleet or as a possible jumping off point for an invasion of Schleswig-Holstein and the seizure of the Kiel Canal. That's all to say that these plans would be related to the Baltic project, as it would give access to the Baltic to the Grand Fleet, but before it could transfer to the Baltic, the German High Seas Fleet would either need to be defeated or somehow prevented from entering the North Sea. Fischer would see these large light cruisers or light battle cruisers as a support vessel for his Baltic project, to which an interesting letter Fischer wrote about the vessels to Sir Eustace Henry William Tenyonson, Dane Court, in March of 1915, to which I'm getting from British Battle Cruisers 1905 to 1920 by John Roberts. Fisher writes, I've told the First Lord that the more I consider the qualities of your design of the big light battle cruisers, the more I am impressed by its exceeding excellence and simplicity. All three vital requirements of gunpowder, speed, and draft of water are so well balanced. Beardmore and Vickers, neither of whom was to build one of these ships, are absolutely sure that they can produce two ships in 11 months which alone is a testimony to the goodness of the design as regards to simplicity. However, I fear we are not going to even get two out of the four owing to the parliamentary bugbear delaying the four ships of the royal sovereign type. It's a great pity as it will be very greatly regretted. The present light small cruisers get their speed knocked down to once at 15 knots in heavy weather, so it will be of no use to accompany them and scout for the battle cruisers, and may fall prey to the enemy's battle cruisers if caught by them scouting in heavy weather. Now, the designation Large Light Cruiser is an interesting one. As Fisher would continue to campaign for more vessels, he would describe as Large Light Cruisers, but they would be better described as Light Battle Cruisers, armed with two 15-inch gun turrets. The description as Large Light Cruisers was really a ploy to get cabinet approval, because the construction of further battle cruisers and battleships had been vetoed, but the construction of Light Cruisers had not. Fisher would also comment to Danecourt that these ships be used against enemy cruisers that might reach the open sea to attack merchant ships, as well as describing the 18-inch gun Furious and how it would be used in his Baltic project, as well as a possible 20-inch gun vessel for future projects, hoping that these large guns would be able to assist in his hoped invasion of Pomerania. Another interesting thing to note would be the shallow draft of these ships, and a quote from British battle cruisers, quote, the specific shallow draft also provided in Renown and Repulse and later Hood class is also far from a straightforward Baltic requirement. Shallow draft was necessary for close inshore operations and could have been used to enable them to use waters denied to enemy heavy ships of deep draft, but it was also seen as valuable for other reasons. End quote. Now, to get into the actual development of Courageous and Glorious, their plans were submitted for approval in late January of 1915 essentially being reduced versions of Renown, with the removal of B turret, and the hull armor reduced to that of a light cruiser, but would enjoy the adoption of small tube boilers and geared turbines, which would save weight and improve the efficiency of their machinery installation. Another improvement for Courageous and Glorious would be that their bulkheads would be increased to a uniform thickness of 1.5 inches, which would add an additional 500 tons to their displacement, and increase their draft as well as reducing their speed. This was hoped to be done to Renown and Repulse for fear of underwater attack, but the ships were too far along in their construction, and with the additional time required to do so, it was considered unacceptable. With these changes to Courageous and Glorious, they would be laid down in late March and April of 1915 respectively. While under construction, a major addition was that of deck plating, following the Battle of Jutland, which would add an additional 400 tons to their displacement. Now there would be other changes to the vessels, as they would come in 1,700 tons heavier than the original estimations. A change could have possibly been the installation of the triple 4-inch mounting, with the original estimation providing for 16 4-inch mountings. As for the particulars of the vessels of the Courageous class, as of the 28th of January 1915, they would be 17,400 tons, later to be 17,800 tons, the machinery for 90,000 shaft horsepower with a top speed of 32 knots, 
an armament of four 15-inch guns and two twin turrets, 16 4-inch guns, three 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, along with five Maxim machine guns and two torpedo tubes. As for armor, they would have side thicknesses of 3 inches amidships and 2 inches forward, barbettes of a max thickness of 7 inches, conning tower thickness of 10 inches, gun shields would vary in thickness at 13 inches, 11 inches, and 7 inches, along with torpedo bulkheads of 3 quarters of an inch, and a maximum deck thickness of 1 inch sloped. As for Furious, who would be more like a half-sister as compared to the vessels of the Courageous class, being laid down in 1915 as well. With her aforementioned 18-inch guns, she would displace 19,200 tons with machinery for 90,000 shaft horsepower and a top speed of 31.5 knots, and two 18-inch guns, one in one turret forward and one aft, along with eight 5.5-inch guns, three 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, five maximum machine guns, and two torpedo tubes. Her armor layout would be similar to the Courageous class, differing in main deck thickness, having a maximum thickness of 1.75 inches. Courageous and Glorious would take around 18 months to build, with Courageous running trials in October of 1916 and Glorious in December. Courageous would suffer structural damage while working up to full speed against the rough sea, with the forecastle and other areas buckling, along with some leaks in the oil tanks. There would be about 130 tons of weight added to help stiffen up the ships. Now, these ships would be prime suspects for carrier conversion later in their service history. Now, to go into Furious's conversion a little bit here, because I find hers to be the most interesting out of the three, as Furious's first conversion was a partial conversion, removing the fore turret and replacing it with a flight deck and a hangar, as seen by this photo from the Imperial War Museum. Later in the winter between 1917 and 1918, she would have the rear 18-inch gun removed, and a second flight deck fitted between the funnel and the stern, becoming a fully-fledged aircraft carrier, later being modified to include a full-length flight deck, as well as her half-sisters Courageous and Glorious. And to quote from British battle cruisers once more, quote, Despite their unpromising start, the large light cruisers became true representatives of the capital ship of the future. End quote. I would like to apologize for this video not being quite as long as the first part, which can be explained by the fact I just have a ton of schoolwork to do at the time of writing this, and I tend to have to stay up quite late to write these. Also, because I attempted to write the development of the Admiral class into this video, and that would have been like a 20 page long script as I have found out, and I just don't have the time to record that. Also because HMS Hood is arguably the most famous vessel of the Interworld Royal Navy, and possibly of the Second World War, I think it's appropriate that her development gets its own video. But as I'm sitting here and recording this, a uh, thought just came to my mind. How would you guys like it if I actually edited all these videos together once they were finished and released them as a full length video? So it would probably run somewhere in the 20 to 25 minute range I think. If you guys would like that, please let me know down in the comments below. So enough with my excuses, and with that, I'll leave you guys until next time, my friends. And instead of the usual ending, why don't you go tell someone special that you love them?